I, I just filled out the joyfully um, uplifter uh, application. Cool. Right. And, uh, you know, th- th- we just talked about it recently about the, the calendar and you tell me that it's full. So starting it, I mean, I remember back in, in digital jungle, when we used to speak about joyfully and you were, you were show me your, um, sort of like what you had your prototype and something that was just getting started yeah. very, very early on, you yeah. were doing other things and you were trying to run this, this uh, mental health app. Uh, you yeah. know, to, to help people with, with mental health problems. Yeah. So my first question is what has been the biggest, um, the biggest game changer for you in this last two years to take you to a place where now you're, you don't even have room or, or, you know, there's not even anyone, any, uh, uh, something like the calendar's full for you guys. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Um, Great question, man. And and I just have to start off by saying, by the way, I'm just so glad to to be on here. You've always been someone who I have a, an immense amount of respect for. So when I uh when I heard about the podcast and, and the opportunity to come on, you know, I, I'm I'm obviously overjoyed. It's a it's a great privilege to be here. Um so yeah, as far as kind of what the big breakthrough has been, or maybe like to your question, like what's what's the thing that's changed a lot right but um in the context of of uplifters and i I know that during this conversation we will uh we'll kind of explain what that means what an uplifter is etc but um in that context you know what we've decided and we realize is that there's actually a lot of interest um as far as folks who want to be uplifters from uh licensed coaches so whether it's dating coaches or life coaches etc you know, there's so many of them, you know, hundreds of thousands in America alone. However, for new coaches and for uh, uh, coaches who haven't yet uh, established themselves, one of their biggest challenges is one, finding their voice and being comfortable speaking to different types of people. And two, uh, finding people to talk to and getting that experience. So well, I've learned this, of course, through a lot of conversations that we've had, but we've begun onloading uh, as uplifters uh, a lot of coaches and that's been one of the big uh, one of the big breakthroughs from that perspective um from the side of you know the folks who are actually doing the uplifting uh it's been that we've kind of figured out a way of solving uh, their problem while also helping our users as well got it got it um i want to ask you mark is there something that was truly unexpected for you um, in, in building this, this, um, uh, this app mm-hmm. and, and you can, you could think technically or people wise or strategically or logistically, whatever that is, was yeah. there any obstacle or might still be a big obstacle? I, I want to know about like your biggest obstacle. What, is, what has hindered the progress the most? And it could also be something inside you. Mm-hmm. Uh, possibly anything that's like, uh, this really, um, gets in the way. Yeah. Um, I think that, uh, and I, dude, we could, I could talk about that for, a, for a while. Right. Um, but I, I think that, uh, <laughs> I, I think that, and, and I wonder, you know, I, I'm even curious about for you as well, but I think one thing for, for me personally, um, dude, there's so much information out there as far as like, you know, entrepreneurial stuff, you know, what to do, what not to do. There's books, there's email uh, newsletters, there's, you know, websites and podcasts, you know, I mean, all these different things. Right. And I am someone who I, I like listening to interviews. I like listening to people, you know, to experts speak about um, uh, their expertise, the things that they're experts in. Um, so I think that for me, Farhan, honestly, it's just been really sifting through all the information that's out there, including we get, you know, we have data obviously internally, right. Uh, uh, that's generated through the app, but it, it's kind of like, um, but more so what I'm speaking to here is all the external information, the experts and the things that they say you should do and shouldn't do, et cetera. Um, and kind of figuring out, you know, what, and what advice do I take and what advice do I leave? You know, what's the, what, what do they say? Separating the wheat from the chaff, right? Like kind of figuring out, you know, what are the, the insights that I should, should follow and, you know, frankly, far on the way I deal with that is just by making sure that every day I'm, I'm making progress and doing something right. Um, I told you that I was, I was up last night pretty late, you know, um, and I get up 
pretty and I got up pretty early yesterday too, right? And today, you know, kind of the same thing. So making sure that but making sure that I'm focusing on the right thing. There's this whole concept of the Pareto principle that I'm sure you're familiar with. Um, you know, what is it, eighty percent of the results come from twenty percent of the work. So um thinking smart about, you know, what are those key areas, the th key things that we need to do that we can get the most learning from or get the most the, the best business outcome from, and then figuring that out. And dude, honestly, if there's a shortcut for that, you know, I'm, I'm always, uh, always, uh, uh, I'm all ears, but uh, I would definitely say that, um, yeah, man, just kind of filtering through all the information is out there and then deciding like, what do we need to really act on? Um, it's a challenge, man. It's a challenge for everybody and I'm, I'm still working through it. An uplifter who joins mm -hmm. and does get accepted, right? Mm -hmm. I want to know about that interview process, that mm -hmm. call, which would, because a, 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 a viewer could, would love, you know, m may love to become an uplifter. Mm -hmm. So how would, how, how does someone align themselves to this? Why would someone be fit for this? Yeah. Um, great question. Um, so, First of all, I, I got to be honest, Farhan, you definitely threw me off with the Harry Harlow uh, example you gave there, man, with the with the monkeys and everything. Uh, uh, man, you said earlier that um, you know he did these evil experiments and everything like this, and the 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 the, uh, the points kind of connected for me as you were giving that example. Um, <laughs> sorry, but back to uh, back to what we were talking about. Um, so. The, the question is about, you know, what types of folks do we look for as uplifters and then kind of what the interview process is. So we, it's changed over time. Uh, initially, and, and it, it still applies. Um, we look for folks who are empathetic, right? We look for folks who genuinely want to help other people. And oftentimes, and, and this is something that we always love to hear during the interview process, is when a prospective uplifter says something like, well, this is what I do anyway. This is what I do with my family, with my friends. And, you know, I, because I, I also, I, I've kind of fit into that category. Uh, I, I've been an uplifter for, for years, right. Uh, without even having, um, a concept concept of, of what that actually even means. Um, you know, and there's this whole concept of emotional labor and how fair is that? And, and we can talk about that as well, if you'd like, but what we look for again is folks who have empathy and who genuinely are here to help others. And we have a series of, uh, we have a five-step interview, uh, five-step onboarding process. Um, and we have a very long interview process uh, where we ask a lot of questions to try to get to that point in a number of different ways through through predominantly open-ended questions. Um, now, as far as with the interview process, uh, act, or excuse me, as, as far as, you know, uh, yeah, the types of people we look for and, and the folks we've brought on, we've brought on folks who are, you know, Paralympians. Uh, one person was in the U.S. Special Olympic team for powerlifting. Uh, we have three different members of uh, a large or very, very popular uh, documentary films. Um, uh, one of which is actually on, on Hulu and Disney Plus right now. Um, we have folks on there who are, you know, guidance counselors at schools, drug counselors, folks who are in the church, you know, uh, uh, deacons, and 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 you know, folks like this. We, we don't. We don't discriminate as far as lived experience because we know that the the users who are coming on to, onto our app, some of them are going to want to talk about you know faith and spirituality. Some of them are going to want to talk to someone maybe about drugs or something like this. Um, we don't necessarily force folks to go down one of those directions, but we want to make sure that we have uplifters that can speak to a variety of experiences, uh, and that's one of the most important things that we're looking for during the interview process. Uh, and we'll be opening. Uh, um, the interview slots up back soon. Uh, but right now we, people can still apply, but yeah, it's just, uh, we, we just have, you know, a lot of folks on there and, you know, we, we, we have other things we have to focus on in the meantime. Got it. Mark. Um, yeah, man, thank you for your vulnerability. First of all, like you're, you're, you know, answering everything honestly. And I really appreciate that because it's, sometimes it's hard, especially when we dig into our own life mm -hmm. to bring those thoughts back. Yeah. Um, and, 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 with this uh, concept, I want to ask you, because yeah. um, this happened to me a lot. Whenever I was doing a lot of coaching mm -hmm. and have, you know, one on one or group coaching or doing client stuff, mm -hmm. I, I don't know what it is about my personality, but I feel the pain that they're feeling yeah. in such a way that it's really draining, mm -hmm. like, wow, mm -hmm. draining. Mm 
Mm-hmm. So it, when an uplifter comes on and let's say they have this enthusiasm and excitement to, to help people and which is so awesome. Mm-hmm. Do you have anything in place where there is a sustainability? Um, uh, th- there's something that allows them to sustain the uplifting throughout their life and not that, Hey, the first three people I'm going to uplift this week, I do great, but then I drain myself. And then yeah. the last three have like this shitty thing. So what I'm asking yeah. is how do you audit the uplifter? Great question. Uh, and you, you, t- you touched on something very, very important to us. Um, excuse me. Uh, if my head of operations, Danielle was on this call, she would, uh, I know she would have a lot to say on this because in, in our training, we actually have uh, a, a module uh, that's about that topic. Uh, I, I believe it's called like uh, burn. It, it's called burnout, but there's like mm. a specific a specific um, term for it. But yeah, it's just that idea of yeah, you're 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 taking in other people's energy, right? And then it can have um, that that can impact you in a, in a very real way. That's something that she, uh, you know I, I don't want to put her out there, but that's something that a lot of the therapists deal with. Um, and it, it, you know, it's, it's definitely difficult to, uh, to circumnavigate. So when it comes to, yeah, so anyway, the point making point being in our training, we, we definitely deal with that, but we're always looking for new ways to address that. And we do, you know, things like group calls among uplifters to let them speak to each other. Um, and they can talk about, you know, ways that they address that. We also look for uplifters that practice self-care. So that's one of the things that is really important for us in the screening process is, you know, that they understand what self-care is and that they actually um, have a self-care practice that they themselves uh, uh, take part in. Um, as far as auditing the uplifters, um, you know, we, we everything is anonymous on the app. So I want to make sure I say that clearly. Um, mm. We don't collect, and you saw this yourself, we don't collect users' name or address or contact information necessarily. You know, you, you create uh, an account on the app, but that information is not shared with uplifters, uh, so everything is—it's like you're, you're you're private on on this on this app, right? Um, and you know, we we deal now where we're talking now with with companies with you know selling this as a perk to to companies, right? Um, you know, we have a couple of, of big ones that we're very close with uh, with, with signing, and one of them we actually have the contract out. Um, so it's just a matter of you know. Um, we, we want to make sure that we're being of service and also we want to make sure that we are being private. So being that we have folks on our team that are licensed therapists, uh, they've been through the, the, the training. Also, we don't, uh, our, our platform and what we do, it's not really under the guise of HIPAA, but we still, we still follow and still, um, uh, um, have the same guidelines and the same data privacy protections that, someone who was HIPAA compliant would have. So we, we go above and beyond in that regard. But yeah, but uh, uh, certain members of our team, like one or two people, are able to um, look into the contents of the conversation to make sure that things are going well, um, w- if need be, because the user can flag if there's an issue, the uplifter can flag if there's an issue, and that would definitely prompt that. And even beyond that, you know, the, the users are also able to indicate, hey, this is what I wanted, this is the kind of response I was hoping for, or you know, this is not what I was looking for. Um, and then that also can be another prompt for folks to look into it to see to see what's happened. Um, but yeah, th- those are the, way we, the ways we audit. You know, one is user-initiated and the other uh, is upper, uplifter-initiated. 